Now, as we're going up the steps into the garden, as you can see, this uh, hellebore is going strong still. It's been several weeks. Anyway, the thing is, this is uh, unfortunately a video where I'm going to say, ooh, what an interesting smell, or ooh, what a gorgeous scent. And you'll just have to take my word for it. As we're coming up here, I see a bumblebee. Uh, we go past the path, on the path, especially planted nearby, is the highly sweetly scented buffalo currant from the United States. My bees odoratus, odoratus, my goodness me, it certainly is. And these yellow flowers are intensely sweetly sm uh, smelling. Hmm. Oh, dear me, it's a pity you can't smell it. But my goodness me, it's gorgeous. Carrying on, and before we even leave the wall garden, here is a flower I look forward to every year. Absolutely gorgeous. It has un unfortunately got a name with a sort of certain number of S's in it. It's up to you to uh, guess how many S's. This is Peony Cambessa Desii. Isn't that gorgeous? Wow, that's all I can say. Very early flowering peony. Sometimes the end of March, although now we are in April. It used to be quite widespread in the Balearic Islands, but uh, it's now confined to Mallorca and grows on a typical Mediterranean scree with grey leaf plants and so on. So it needs a good deal of sunshine and good drainage. Just below the uh, peony on the wall, I always look every year anxiously to see if my favourite nasturtium has come out. And then suddenly, suddenly, here it is. It's wonderful. It's so funny, I, I just can't help smiling every time I see it. And the, this is called nasturtium uh, tropiolum, tricolour. And uh, these look like little faces, really, looking at you. On their bent up stalks, tiny filamentous stalks. And they always look to me as if they're facing into the wind, but optimistically. Tropiolum tricolour. Well, let's see what April has to offer us. Something I want to show you up here. Coming past Dicentra Valentine is the double flowered ornamental quince, Japanese quince, which has got these very soft yellow, creamy double flowers. I think it's very attractive. Yucky Goten, it's called, or Yuki Goten. Yucky sounds a bit, well, yucky. Now here's the Japanese loquat that I showed you before with its pale yellowy green new growth which makes for a rather stunning look but uh, I'm just going to show you another. Now here's a more tender loquat which has these beautiful new growths which this one 
is red, unlike the yellow of the Japanese loquat. This is uh, sheltered under some trees and at the very top flowers are forming but of course far too far up to see. However the main attraction as far as I'm concerned is the foliage and these lovely new growths. Aerobotria deflexa. This acacia is quite rare in the wild in Tasmania and it was only discovered in 1974 uh, and named after Wolfgang Patacek, known as Wally Patacek, who was a forester and um, plant collector. And so it's rather affectionately known as Wally's Wattle, which has a certain ring about it. The yellow flowers are um, contrasting well with the grey leaf. And you'll observe that right at the start of the new growth, it's a lovely red colour. Altogether, a gorgeous wattle and quite hardy. If you come around here we can see another of the quite hardy acacias. This is Acacia pravissima and these uh, leaves or cladodes are pointed triangular but we've still got the same puffball yellow flowers. This is a uh, quite a hardy wattle and actually replaces an enormous one that was just a bit further out which was blown down in a storm. Coming through the uh, herbaceous purple flowered spring pea, Atherus vernus, we come across this lovely group of tulips which are spreading away. Tulipa saxatilis or bakeri, depending on what you call it. These are from the wild originally. They have a nice make a nice combination with the new growth of the peonies, which is lovely in red. As you can see, I've just done the annual spring slaughter of the Cornus Midwinter Fire. There's a pile of these beautiful orange twigs, which of course, if you don't do this, you won't get that. So it's rather drastic, and but it has to be done. Anyway, the thing is that opposite is what I think is the most wonderful Viburnum percent. This is Viburnum burkwoodi and Russell. And my goodness me, the cinnamon scent is something else wafting about. It's just fantastic. Fantastic percent, and it flowers for ages. And what I didn't promise you was uh, well, that all the smells were going to be pleasant ones. I, my nose is being led past this fantastically thorny trunk of the uh, Gladitia caspica. This is when you get somebody else to do the pruning on. <laughs> anyway, round here, uh, getting stronger, is this 
fabulously elegant shrub with this gorgeous leaf and these yellow flowers with a red base. Uh, some of these uh, plants, which are called Elysium, are um, uh, used in incense making, but I rather fear this one would drive people away rather than attract them. Still, it is the most elegant shrub. The foliage is beautiful and it's covered in its uh, flowers here. I had to chop it in half because it was getting so tall. This is Elysium simonsii, Simons. Uh, coming up here, near the summer house, I thought I'd just show you a rather unusual looking lilac. It's got sweet little tubular flowers. It's a species lilac from China, Western China. And it's called pinatifolia because these leaves are what they call pinnate. Not like a lilac's leaf at all. They occasionally have mauve flowers, but this one is a white flowered form. The flowers are um, pleasantly sweetly scented, as a lilac should be. Well, there's Bertie on alerty. Aren't you, Bert? What are you looking for? Guarding the property, as usual. Well done. Now, coming up here between two pathways at the fork, I have deliberately planted this camellia with the amazingly uh, weeping fountain-like habit. This is camellia. Cupido, and I think this group here makes a lovely uh, full stop to the fork with a, a coloured bark acer above it. The flowers come out of uh, reddish buds. And they open to white singles. I'll lift one up here to show you. Very sweet. And with this amazing sort of fountain-like form. New foliage is the thing in spring and my goodness, this uh, Japanese Acer called Chishio improved I don't know what the original was like, but this improved form is wonderful with its fantastic red leaves. And the autumn colour is lovely. It goes greenish um, in the summer, but by then there are lots of other distractions. Coming down from the Chishio improved, a couple more red leaves to show you. Now this I love. This is, although not flowering this year, this is Pyrrhus Roallon spike. Presumably the spike is the shape of the flowers. But quite frankly, when you've got leaves as gorgeous as this, covering the plant, who needs flowers? <laughs> 